Manella. Yes, my dear, a name that any microbe should be proud to own. <laughs> I thought the wedding went quite well, really. And everybody behaved themselves at the reception. All didn't except they? your yeah. Uncle Jack. He was as tight as a tick. Please. The expression is tight as a man. Basil, aren't you going to give me a kiss? Eventually, I hope to, yes. But first, my dear, first we've got to find ourselves somewhere nice and warm where we can settle down and multiply. What, do sums? You're not concentrating again, are you, Desdemonia? No. Where we can settle down and raise a family. Oh, oh, Basil. But I thought this was going to be our home. This? Oh, good grief, no. Now we've got a journey ahead of us, a long and... And perhaps a very dangerous journey. Oh, where are we now, then? Now? Well, now we're in a butcher's shop. Oh. To be more specific, on the butcher's knife. I shall always have a soft spot for this butcher's knife, dearest. It brought us together. Yes, yes. Odd, is it not, my chicken? To think that if that butcher had not used the same knife for slicing the liver that you were in and the leg of pork that I was in, we might never have met. Are all butcher's shops as nice, Basil? Would that they were, my love. Would that they were. Unfortunately, no. Alas, my dear, it's not every butcher shop where you get the chance to have a perfect wedding reception. All our guests got together so easily via that slicing machine and the slab and the scales. Some even got a lift on that dirty old mutton cloth the butcher used to wipe down the counter. But meat's nice stuff to live in, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yes, meat. Mm. Cheese, eggs, cream. You see, the whole point about food is that every so often, humans get forgetful and they do something silly with it and whoosh! Anything else, Mrs. Smith? I thought a nice quarter of town. All right. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. oh, hello. Something's happening. It is fresh, isn't it? Oh, Mrs. Smith. Goes back in the fridge every night. We are on a piece of sun-warmed tongue. But it's swarming. And do you know why it's swarming? No. Humans are funny. They leave this tongue in the warm sun all day and think that they're being so careful by putting it back in the fridge at night. And any Boy Scout knows that that sort of temperature doesn't kill us. When they fetch us out again, we just go on as before. Oh. I'll tell you another thing. What's that? We won't get cooked in this tongue either. You are wonderful, Basil, finding us the perfect home. Yes, I do rather agree that I've been... <laughs> now what? What's happened, Basil? It's all gone quiet. That butcher sold the town without us. We're marooned. Morning, madam. Good morning. Can I have a pound of your sausages, please? I think we're reprieved. There are, love. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. Bye. Where are we now? Well, putting two and two together, light of my life, oh. I would say we're upon a sausage at the bottom of a human shopping bag. Oh, Basil, I'm frightened. Are we going to be all right? We stand a fighting chance. Turkey, get down, you bad boy. Testimonia, I think we're laughing. Oh, oh Basil, are you sure? Well smiling. We have, by the merciful hand of Providence, arrived in a kitchen kept by a lady who doesn't seem to be hygiene conscious. <laughs> well, what happens now? We just wait and see. Oh, I fixed the basin upstairs. I was right. Was the outside pipe? Oh, that's good. Do wash your hands. Hear what she said, my puppet. Some humans seem to think that washing their hands before touching food is the be-all and end-all of hygiene. But surely it must help, dearest. I mean, all the microbes on his hands were washed away. Oh, it helps very much indeed. I mean, one of the first principles is to wash the hands. But it's not the whole story. See, what those humans don't seem to realise is that we microbes are everywhere. Oh, yes. Well, we're here, aren't we? 
I mean, washing his hands hasn't hurt us, has it? No, but cooking will. My late Auntie Maud was cooked up and killed in a rissole. I didn't know. I am sorry. Did she leave a family? Four families. Before she... Before she was taken from us, she travelled all over the kitchen. She had one family in a dirty tea towel, one on a chopping board, and two in a trifle that took three days to eat up. There's your answer. We can't all live forever, us microbes, but if humans allow us to get from place to place, and we can find somewhere warm and moist, given time, we can wax fruitful and multiply. Ooh, smashing. Charming. Uh, charming? That was us. We made him do that. Us bacteria. You mean we can live down inside humans? In them and on them. Lots of our relatives, the Staphylococci, set up families on fingertips and lips and so on. Humans have lovely warm bumps too. They call them spots and uh, boils and places. Basil, this getting inside humans, I mean, we microbes, we don't poison them, do we? I mean, make them dead. Dead? Well, that's a bit extreme, but I suppose it, uh, it could happen. For instance, a waiter in a restaurant could have a poison sun. You'd find Staphylococci there. Now, if they got into food and had a chance to breed, uh, they'd produce poisons, toxins. Well, cooking might kill off the Staphylococci, but the cooked poison is as dangerous to humans as is fresh poison. And we have a few relations who are real criminal types. <laughs> if they get inside a human, whew, hospital. But Basil, if we microbes can do humans so much damage, mm -hmm. how is it that we haven't killed off the whole human race? Funny, isn't it? Mind you, mind you, mostly, mostly we salmonella do need a huge, enormous family to do real damage. And to multiply properly, we must have the right conditions. Warmth, moisture, and time. No, nope, usually they just get a touch of the old indijaggers, a few days off work. Acid stomach, they call it, but it's us. <laughs> We're not very nice, are we? Oh, some of us are very nice. Absolutely essential, in fact, to the old life cycle. Breaking all the dead stuff down to be used again. Part of life's rich pageant. Basil. Yes, love of my life. Is there anything you don't know? No. <sighs> you know, I feel a bit peckish. Well, I hope you're not expecting breakfast at this time of the morning. I wouldn't mind a couple of sausages, though. Oh, dear. What's up, dearest? You've gone all pale. Nothing to worry your pretty little head about, my precious. It's just that the lady there is going to fry us. Oh, Basil, but won't frying kill us? Yes, it will. Mm. Basil, I'm beginning to feel lovely and warm. Oh, it's ever such a nice feeling. Give me a kiss. What are you thinking about, Desdemonia? It will be nice in a few more minutes. Come on, jump! What? Come on! Oh! Phew. Phew, that was only a thing. Basil, I, I don't know what's come over you. You've never been rough like that before. There was I getting all nice and warm and loving and suddenly you drowned on me. I was only saving your life, you stupid, li lovely little thing. Now come along, cheer up. Give your Basil a nice big smile. I'm just an old silly. You mustn't take any notice of me. I won't, my little cabbage moth, I won't. We are now temporally safe and sound upon a fork. Just that I, I like it when it's all nice and warm. Yeah, so do I, but not when we're about to be frizzed up. Just trust your Basil. <laughs> Basil, why are you looking worried? I'm not the slightest bit. Yeah. I know that when my Basil is in command, nothing can really go wrong. <laughs> Uh. But it's me, Desdemonia. Where, where am I? You're here. You shouted, water, we're all washed up, and then you fainted. Nonsense, Angel. I'm not the sort of... Water? <laughs> oh, oh, Basil, 
Mm -hmm. Oh, Basil, put yourself together. You are a microbe and not a mouse. Humble apologies, my rosebud. But I've always had a dread of W-A-T-E-R. However, clearly, this was not the ultimate. Hot water with washing up liquid. That really would have been the end. Well, where do you think we are now, then? I hope those sausages aren't going to ruin your appetite for dinner. I'm doing a very nice stuffed lamb. Good grief. We're in stuffing. Huh? You can't keep your nose out of anything, can you? Testimonia, my lily, our long journey might be nearing its end. Luck may yet be favouring us. Oh, no. It's not nearly warm enough here to hatch my brood. Patience, dear heart. Fate has decreed that we find ourselves temporarily ensconced in a joint of lamb. Oh, we'll be cooked dead. You said that's how they do us in. We won't necessarily be cooked dead. We happen to be on the inside of the meat. Oh, what good will that do? Well, humans don't often cook their meat right through. But in any meat, the place for us is in the middle. If we're on the outside like that, then we're cooked and done away with. Unless, of course, they roll the meat up, which puts us on the inside, which is where we are. It'll be warm, my love, but not uncomfortably so. <sighs> oh, Basil, are you sure? Trust me, my pretty. Quarter to one. Hurry up with that dinner, love. I'm going to be late. You like your lamb well done. It's meant to be a few more minutes. <sighs> I'll never trust you again, Basil Salmonella. I'm boiling. A slight error of judgment on my part. My <laughs> wee one, nothing more. Slight error. Uh, Courage, mon micro. <sighs> Think of tomorrow. There isn't going to be a tomorrow. We're going to be burned alive today, you'll see. And then you'll be sorry. No, we won't. We're bang in the middle of a big joint. We'll live to see another day. Trust me, my partridge. <laughs> Trust me, my partridge. <laughs> I've never been so cold. How was I to know they put the remains of the joint in the refrigerator? Oh. I didn't think this pair had a refrigerator. Oh. We've met such a, such a nice class of microbes so far, but, but this lot in the fridge, I, I've never heard such a little language. My fault, it was stupid humans again. Putting us in here while the joint was still hot. Of course it's going to warm the fridge up and wake up and be microbe in the place. Oh. My lobes have gone cold. And my feet have gone cold. I want to start my family. I want to start my family. Don't stop sniveling, Desdemonia. How can you start a family in a refrigerator? Really. Hurry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry I was too short-tempered. It's, it's just that, well, I don't know as much as you do. Why should you, Heartsease? That is my job, is it not, as master of the family? <laughs> Tell me about some of the nice warm places, Battle, where we could find a nice warm home. Well, now, let me see. Restaurants, canteens, places like that are much better for us. Why, dear Heart? Well, everything's done on a much bigger scale. Now, take my famous uncle, Uncle Pedro. Uncle Pedro, as you might guess, came over with a consignment of beef. He knew that the great thing was to get to the middle. <laughs> the first day, about half the pie was sold. So next day, the chef warmed it up on a hot plate. Know how long it takes to warm up a shepherd's pie that size? Hours! And all the time it was gently warming, Uncle Pedro was raising family after family after family. Result? Fifty-six humans of work for today. Gracias, mis amigos. Four sent to hospital. Six visits from the health inspector. And a mention on the television news. Oh, no. Basil, just suppose.
hose. Mm -hmm. But humans got to know about us. And they cleaned everything in hot water and detergent. And there was no dirt anywhere for us to live in. And they used lots of disinfectant everywhere. Well, we'd die, wouldn't we? I mean, we'd have nowhere to multiply. Of course, that's quite true. But if humans did make their homes as clean as operating theatres and got rid of nearly all of us, you see, they'd lose their resistance to us. They'd stop building up what they call antibodies, the things inside them which fight intruders like us, the consequence would be they'd only have to make one mistake, let a few of us get a hold, and they'd be in real trouble. No, my squig of parsley, we and humans have just got to get on together, coexist. It's really what you might call keeping a balance. And tomorrow we're going to start our family. Promise? Yes, of course, my little... <sighs> no. No? No. Testimonia, dearest Winkle, the chances of a microbe surviving are really very small. In fact, of all our microbe friends and relations at the wedding, we are probably the only ones left alive by now. Oh, well, that's life. Shan't be in for dinner, love. I'll get something out. Oh, mind you get something proper. It's only cold meat tonight. Cold meat? Don't worry, I'll do something with it. <laughs> all right. Mm, isn't this lovely? Perfect. Mm, we're so lucky, Basil. So warm. Just right. Yes, dearest, it's happened at last. We've found that chink in the human's armour. She's warming us up gently with gravy. Mm. And now we really can have our family. <sighs> And by the time old Fred had got the problem sorted out, that was another hour gone. Well, if your meal's ruined, don't blame me. Could have telephoned. Oh, well, as the saying goes, for what we are about to receive... It says here there's a human lady expecting six babies. Oh. How many babies did you just have while we were being warmed up in the oven, Peach Blossom? 140 million, 987,306. <laughs> and Basil, mm -hmm. it is their baby buys time. Oh. Oh, well, <sighs> here we go. Good night, Susie. Good night, Henrietta. Good night, Lottie. Good night, Anaminta. Good night, Cecil. Good night, Gladys. Good night, twins. Good night, Tarquin. Good night, Penelope. Good night, good day.